How do you know if your hand is in the glove? How do you know if you're operating the way you were designed to operate? Well, the evidence of obeying God's operating system shows up here. It's called the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit, the nine elements, show whether or not we're operating in Christ. Whether we are surrounded by Christ. Whether he, through his Spirit, is controlling and whether we're responding to him in obedience because we love him. So, let's just go through uh, Galatians 5.22. And, and we'll go through it a different way. You can look at your verse, but let me show you everything that surrounds it. When operating the way we were designed to operate, so when, when our new creation that we are in Christ, that's Ephesians 1 through 3, the way God designed us as a new creation in Christ, when we operate that way, we are refilled every day with self-sacrificing love. Now, I was born, at, from birth on, if I saw a plate of cookies, I would look them over and I would say, you deserve the biggest one. And I would look them over and touch them, move them until I got the biggest one and I'd take it. And my mom would say, you're not supposed to do that, don't touch them all, and don't, you know, don't be a piggy and, and take them all. But no matter how many times she said that, I did it because that was my default system. And, and if you picked a cupcake, you got the one with the most frosting. And if you looked at the seats, you got the best seat. And if anything, you picked, we are, we are wired to think of ourselves first. But when God's operating system operates within us, every day he gives us a new dose of self-sacrificing love. In honor, we prefer others more than ourselves. We don't push. We don't want our way. We don't go through life like bulldozers and tanks and steamrollers. We become like Jesus Christ. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And if you come to me, you'll find rest for your souls. That doesn't play well in the get rich, you know, and dominate scene that we live in. But Christ says, self-sacrificing love that gives, that serves, that thinks of others ahead of myself is the first sign that he is filling my life and, and I am operating in his system. It doesn't stop there, it gets worse. We are recharged every day, you know, like your phone, you plug it in, recharge it, or your clippers or whatever you recharge. But what does God recharge us with? Endless joy. What is joy? Most people are tethered to their circumstances. Here's your circumstance, and here's the person. Circumstances go down, they go down. Circumstances go up, they go up. They are so attached to their circumstances that if they hit a bump, their emotions go down with that. And they're just, and you know what the Spirit of God does? He gives us joy, which is being detached from our circumstances. We get detached, and our circumstances keep hitting the railroad tracks, and we stay with this joy that's not ours. That's why people come to us. Remember I told you about the lady at Macy's that moved me from cash register to cash register? I just kept smiling at her. Finally, in the third cash register, she said, are you religious? See, she knew that response was not me because she knows people. She works with people all day long. And people are self-centered. They want their own way. They're impatient. They're, they're you know, they show it. Uh, they, they just, ugh. And, and when I just happily moved to three cash registers, and by the way, I was praying the whole time because I thought, oh, I hate to shop, and this is making me hate it more, you know. And it's, but I just kept smiling. And the joy that is recharged by God every day that's not mine, it's his, I was allowing him to pour out of my life. See, that, that's what we're talking about. Are you operating on that system? Did people think you're religious this week? The way you reacted at Meyer? 
the way you reacted at the clinic, the way you reacted at school, in the line. It doesn't end there. We can go through entire days with a spiritual battery life. You know how uh, people buy Mophies and everything to put around to power their devices? We have a continuous recharging facility that allows us to operate with unstoppable peace. You know what peace is? It's an internal serenity that we are complete, that I don't need anything else in life because I have Christ. And that works uh, to your deathbed if you learn it early on in life. We can have a serenity that as things fall away from our life, possessions, health, mobility, freedom, wealth, whatever it is, we still, at our core, have a peace that never stops because the Prince of Peace has moved within. I was recently sitting with a whole group of people that were trying their hardest to be Christians and none of them knew the Lord. And, and it's so frustrating for people to try and act like a Christian without knowing Christ. And what they do is they try all the outward things, but it doesn't work. It's like flapping your wings and you're not a bird and you can't fly no matter how. And they're just sitting there like this and it's not working, and they're frustrated. Christ, when he moves in, brings a peace that can't be stopped by losing anyone or anything in our life. And it doesn't end there. It's an unflappable long-suffering that we are so long-suffering or patient with people, they go, what's wrong with you? You know, uh, it's like the waiter in Los Angeles that came to Bonnie and said, what are you on? Thought she was on a drug. Because she, she was happy and patient and radiant and this attitude. And, and they only get it by a chemical. And it goes away. We get it constantly refilled. Uh, evident kindness, even to our enemies. You know, I, I always think of Westboro or whatever it's called, Baptist Church. You know, the ones that protest and say they hate homosexuals. They say that. And they, they, they protest at the funerals for homosexuals and say, we hate you and God hates you and all that stuff they say. Do you think that's a manifestation of kindness? Did Christ ever act that way? No. They accused him of spending too much time with those kind of people because he showed the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. And that kind of kindness to our enemies is what makes people want to know Christ. Uh, I've told you this so many times that, that when I was speaking at the conference over in, um, in the Middle East, there were some refugees there. And they said that, that when they share Christ and when they pass out blankets, you know, Samaritan's Purse packets to all the refugees that are streaming in from Syria and from Iraq and from Afghanistan, the normal thing that these refugees say is, why are you doing this? If you snuck into my country... One of them specifically said, if you snuck into my country, Afghanistan, we would kill you. But you met us with a blanket. You took us to a tent. You gave us food. Why? It's the kindness to even our enemies that, that isn't human, and it's not possible to work it up. It's supernatural. It's from God. We reflect God's goodness in an evil world. You know what that means? I used to work at the stage works of the Metropolitan Opera House. I worked on the eighth floor down at my alma mater. It was a stage production for operas. And they would send me down there to get the props. I loved it because I would go down to a place I hadn't seen any human for weeks and I'd flick the light switch and the floor would move. Cockroaches. Two and a half inches. It looked like an Indiana Jones movie. And, but you know what I knew? I'd hit the light, and as soon as the light came on, those cockroaches hate light, love darkness. And, and the floor would, they found their places. And I could walk into that room, and there's not a cockroach in sight by turning the light on. They hate the light and flee it. Do you know what God says? His goodness hates the darkness. And when he fills me, I can't be entertained by darkness. 
I can't be amused by the works of darkness. It's shameful even to speak of what they do, let alone amusing and entertaining. I cannot listen to that. If I detect something opposed to God's goodness, it ruins any music. If, if the lyrics are defiant of God's goodness in this evil world, I am opposed to darkness, and I don't want to. Because of God's goodness within me, I want to reflect his goodness, not the darkness. Uh, I have persistent faithfulness. You know, we, we keep our word and we're faithful lifestyle by the Spirit of God. We have a winsome gentleness to us. I mean, when, when people heard Jesus talk, the ones that were going to arrest him, they came back and they said, we've never heard anybody like this before. There's such a winsomeness. He is so gentle. He, he, is like no, he talks like no one has ever talked before. And all that's packaged in this life bounded by self-control. So what am I just describing? What is self-sacrificing love, endless joy, unstoppable peace, unflappable long-suffering attitudes, evident kindness, reflecting God's goodness, persistently faithful, winsomely gentle, all in this self-controlled package? Well, it's just the list of the fruit of the Spirit. This is the operating system. This is the personality transformation God already has made each one of us into. And every time we surrender to him to fill our life, love comes out. Every time we surrender to him to come into our life, his joy comes out of our life. His peace surrounds us because he is there. And the fruit of the Spirit is an evidence of his presence operating through me. That's our operating system.